everlasting Father, Almighty Yahuwah, Yahuwah, full of compassion and loving kindness, we ask you to please look upon your sons and daughters at this hour. We assemble for one purpose, to worship you, to love you, because Father, more than anyone or anything, it is you that we desire the most. We thirst for your presence. Fellowship with us today, please. Because when we feel your presence, nothing can shake us. We can overcome all things. In this life, we are prepared to go through many tribulations. You have warned us through your book. We stand ground, firmly rooted in faith. But that faith is connected to love. It is your love that enables us to have faith. And so we thank you. We praise you. And we beseech you to accept our praise and worship now. We confess our sins. We repent humbly. We return to you. Accept us once again. Do not take your Holy Spirit away. May you please teach us to always do what is right and fitting in your blessed eyes. Our King Yahushua, prepare please our hearts and our minds. Stand by our side, wherever we may be. Thank you so very much. You are our good shepherd. You gave up your life. You are now leading us, even though you are in heaven. By your spirit, direct our steps. Listen to the cries of your sheep. Attend to our wounds, that we may be strong. Heal us of our sicknesses. Thank you so much for listening to our prayers. Father, please bless us and prepare us as we study your holy words. Your words give us hope. It gives us guidance. It is light upon this dark world that will lead us to you and to life everlasting. Father, please accept and bless the offerings of your people. Help every household, every individual to abound in good works for glorifying your holy name, Yahuwah. We believe, Father, that you have listened to our prayers. We ask everything in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. A happy Sabbath day to everyone, brothers and sisters in the faith. We are truly happy to be able to gather ourselves together, despite the fact that we are scattered throughout the earth in different places. Yet, because of technology, we have been blessed with the opportunity to worship as a body, to worship as the assembly of Yahushua. And so we are here because we acknowledge that the very purpose of our life is to love and to worship our father, Yahuwah. This was made clear when our king, Yahushua, after he was asked what is the greatest of all the commands, his immediate response is to love Yahuwah with all of your heart, strength, and mind, and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. However, there are those who use this conclusion of our king, Yahushua, and then conclude themselves that the Ten Commandments of Yahuwah, the one written on two tablets of stone, are no longer required to observe. Because they say the Ten Commandments was replaced by just two commandments. It is to love Yahuwah and to love your neighbor. However, what many people do not understand is that when our King Yahushua said to everyone that we are to practice love, love for Yahuwah and love for our fellow man, it is not to replace the Ten Commandments, but to summarize the Ten Commandments. This is why we're going to prove today for those who truly love Yahuwah, it can be done only by observing and keeping the Ten Commandments of Yahuwah that he revealed on Mount Sinai on that sacred and appointed day. But before we go there, we need to first understand just how important and valuable is it to love Yahuwah Abba, which is why we need to learn how to properly do so. Let's begin our studies in the book of Matthew, chapter 22, 37 to 38. 
Yahusha replied, you must love Yahuwah, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. How important is it for us to love Yahuwah with all of our heart, soul, and mind? Our King Yahusha says, it is the first and greatest commandment. So without any doubt, the greatest commandment, the central commandment of the Holy Scriptures is to love Yahuwah with all of our life, with all of our heart, with all of our strength. This is why in our study today, we're going to learn how exactly we're going to do that. We need to know what it means to truly love Yahuwah, Abba, with all of our heart. Now, what does this reveal to us about Yahuwah? What does this reveal to us about our King Yahusha? Well, when you consider the word love, what comes to your mind? Is it not relationship? Because love is all about relationship. And so when the Bible teaches us that the greatest commandment is to love with your heart, soul, and mind, this tells us what is most important to Yahuwah is our relationship with Him. In other words, he wants us to have a loving relationship with him. This is the purpose of our creation. He did not simply create us and then forget us. No, he created us and afterwards seeks a relationship with us. This is the purpose of that command to love Yahuwah. What's the proof that indeed our father Yahuwah created us for the purpose of loving him? Let's read the book of Psalm 103 down to 4. Know that Yahuwah is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. What proves that Yahuwah created us for the purpose of loving him? You notice that human beings were created in a special way. This is why the Bible says it is he, who is that he referring to? Yahuwah. Yahuwah made us and we are his and we are his people. And so after Yahuwah created us, he's claiming ownership. These people I made, they belong to me. They are mine. We are the people of Yahuwah. Why did Yahuwah create us? So that we can know him. If you read the first passage or the first line, know that Yahuwah is God. We were created for the purpose of knowing Yahuwah. This is what makes human beings special. You see, Yahuwah created many things. If we are going to ask, for example, our brothers and sisters who are here, what were some of the things Yahuwah God created in the days of creation back in Genesis? Do you still remember? What did God create? He created light. He created the heavens and the earth, right? He created uh, the living creatures. He created the trees. He created the stars. Those are all marvelous works of creation. But when you think about the time when Yahuwah decided to create mankind, what did he say? He stopped and he said, let us create man in our image. This is why human beings are different. From the other works of creation of Yahuwah, human beings are special to the Father. Why? Because every man, every woman on the face of the earth, they bear the image of Yahuwah. What does it mean that we were created in the image of God? It simply means we were created for the purpose of relationship. This is why Yahuwah invites us to know him. This is what the Bible says. No, no, that Yahuwah is God. What does it mean to know Yahuwah? It means to know him and have a personal relationship with him. You see, knowing Yahuwah is the basis for truly loving Yahuwah. We cannot love Yahuwah truly unless we know him first. His invitation to all of us. He's saying to all of us, I am Yahuwah. I want you to know me. To know me, Yahuwah, your God. Do you know how we can get to know Yahuwah? He gave us the Holy Bible. 
When we read the Holy Bible from cover to cover, it reveals the character of Yahuwah. It tells us what he likes. It tells us what he doesn't like. It tells us what pleases him. It tells us what angers him. This is why if we want to truly love Yahuwah, we need to study scripture. We need to get a handle on the character of our father, Yahuwah. Do you know what else Yahuwah has revealed in scripture, which proves he wants us to know him and love him? His name. The very fact he revealed his name throughout the holy scriptures proves he wants us to get to know him as our father. Our God, who is Yahuwah. And so how else can we prove that we truly know Yahuwah, that he is our God? How else can we prove that we truly love Yahuwah? Let's read the book of 1 John, chapter 2, 3, down to 4 and 7. And we can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments. That person is a liar and is not living in the truth. Dear friends, I am not writing to you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. How can a person prove that he knows God, that he loves God truly? Bible says by obeying his commands. Or well, what if a person will say, I know God. I love God, but then does not obey the commandments of God. Bible calls that person a liar. It is impossible to truly know and love God without obeying the commandments. And which are the commands referred to here by the Apostle John? We know what they are. Apostle John says, obey the Ten Commandments. Why do we know this for sure? Because he says, but not an old one. It's not a new command I'm writing to you. The one you received from the beginning. It is the message that you already have heard. What is that command? The Ten Commandments. Therefore, to truly know and therefore truly love Yahuwah requires that we know and keep the Ten Commandments of Yahuwah Abba. This is why we cannot say we no longer need the Ten Commandments. It is what proves our love and our knowledge, our relationship with Yahuwah. And that's what further proves, because there may be those who are not convinced that we still need the Ten Commandments today. There may be those who are not convinced that we are still required to obey the Ten Commandments of Abba. Let's read the answer from our king himself in the book of Mark, chapter 12, 28 down to 30. This is what? Our king himself has to teach us. Please listen. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? Yahusha answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our God, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And so when our King Yahushua was asked, which is the greatest, which is the first commandment of all, our King Yahushua responded by saying to the scribes who were asking the question, Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our God, Yahuwah is one, and you shall love Yahuwah your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and with all your strength. Notice when our King Yahusha answered the question, what did he do? He quoted from scripture. Please look at the screen right now. Look at the answer of our King Yahusha. Do you see the quotation marks? This is because our King Yahusha knows the Old Testament. He studied the Old Testament. In fact, he is the living embodiment of the Holy Scriptures. The Scriptures refer to him. And so Yahushua quotes from the book of Deuteronomy. When he says the first, when he says, Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah our God, Yahuwah is one. Yahushua was quoting from the book of Deuteronomy. Well, what passage in Deuteronomy did he quote? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 6, 4 down to 9. Hear, O Israel, 
Yahuwah, our God, Yahuwah is one. You shall love Yahuwah, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. This is what was quoted by our King Yahushua when he was asked, what is the greatest and the first commandment of the Holy Scriptures? You know what this passage is? Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. You know, if you are to go to Israel, I don't know if it's still applicable today, but back in the ancient days, during the days of Moses, during the days of Joshua, during the days of the prophets, if you were to go to Israel and talk to a person who's Hebrew, they can memorize, they memorize this passage. Because ever since they were young, they would memorize this passage. This was the first thing they would memorize out of all scripture. In fact, they even gave this a name. Do you know what the name of this passage is? This passage is called the Shema. The Shema. Now, why is it called the Shema? The word Shema means to hear. Because the commandment to love Yahuwah is so important, it is framed in the structure of the Shema. What is the structure of the Shema? Well, first of all, the Shema is so important to the Hebrew people, especially during the days of the prophets. It was the foundation of their Hebrew religion. This is why children were required to memorize the Shema. They were to remember the most important command to love Yahuwah. It was recited twice per day. It was the first text a Hebrew child would memorize and the last words of someone who is dying. This tells us this is a primary doctrine, right? This tells us this is of prime importance. This is why when our King Yahushua was asked, what is the first and most important command? He quoted the Shema, the Shema. Well, what is the Shema? What, what is the purpose of that structure? If we go to the next slide, the purpose of the Shema is to basically place the greatest commandment in between a commandment before the command and then afterwards how to carry out that command. And so the structure has three parts. The first, the command before the command. And then the command itself. What is the command itself? To love Yahuwah. And afterwards, the commands after the command, which is basically how to carry out the command. It's like when you go to the hospital and the doctor is going to say something important to you. For example, he wants you to lose weight. He doesn't simply say lose weight. He basically follows the structure, the command before the command, the command and how to carry out the command, right? Because it's so important. And so what is the command before the command, that hospital setting? Well. You, the doctor will say, you got to listen to me. This is a warning. If you don't do this, you're going to die. <laughs> That's the command before the command. What's the command? You got to lose weight. That's the command. Well, how do you lose weight? Well, you got to eat right. You got to exercise. You, gotta, you need to get plenty of sleep and rest. And so there's the command, which is to lose weight, and the commands after the command, which tells the person how to get it done. Right? And so that's the structure. The Shema has a structure. The command before the command, the command itself, and the command after the command. So when we look at Deuteronomy, the Shema, this is how it looks like. Here, O Israel. And so that's the command before the command. And so Yahuwah was telling us, before you go further, I want your full attention. Not only your full attention, but heed this as a warning. Do not simply listen. Listen to understand. Listen with the intent of obeying. Because what I'm about to say next is the most important command. What is that? The actual command, which is what? You shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Now, how do you do that? How can a person carry out this command to love Yahuwah? That's what the purpose of the commands after the command. The Bible says, and these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. And so to carry out the command to love Yahuwah, one must place the words that Yahuwah has commanded on that day. That day they were on the mountain when he spoke to Moses and all the people of Israel. You notice in verse 6, the Bible says, These words which I command you today, they were already given. This is why when we look at Deuteronomy 5, we will find out exactly what those words were that were given as commandments. What were they? 
Let's go to Deuteronomy 5, verse 22. These words Yahuwah spoke to all. Your assembly, the whole assembly heard the voice of Yahuwah. Where? In the mountain. Which mountain was that? Mount Sinai, from the midst of the fire, the cloud and the thick darkness with a loud voice. And he added no more. And he wrote them on two tablets of stone and gave them to me. And so whatever was written on those two tablets of stone, that is what we need to place in our heart and obey. To carry out the command, you shall love Yahuwah with all of your heart, strength, and mind. Do you know what was written in those two tablets of stone? Let's read Deuteronomy 10 verse 4. Yahuwah wrote on these tablets what he had written before. The ten commandments he had proclaimed to you on the mountain. And so when the book of Deuteronomy, the Shema, is mentioned, when it says obey, or when it says love Yahuwah with all of your heart, strength, and mind, to carry out that work, we must obey what? The Ten Commandments. And to, to summarize and look at the structure of the Shema, we have the first part, which is basically like a warning. You need to hear. You need to listen. Because what I'm about to tell you is the most important command. What is that most important command? Love Yahuwah your God. This is the command of all commands. But how do you carry out this command? By fulfilling and obeying the Ten Commandments. And so when our King Yahushua says that the first and greatest commandment is to love Yahuwah, it doesn't mean neglect and forget the Ten Commandments. Next slide. It's because true love for Yahuwah does not mean forgetting the Ten Commandments, because true love for Yahuwah means what? Obeying the Ten Commandments. And this makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, can a person just completely neglect the Ten Commandments and then say, well, I'm still good because after all, well, I love Yahuwah. So they say, I love Yahuwah with all my heart, strength, and mind, but they kill. I love Yahuwah with all my love, with all my heart, strength, and mind, but they steal. And they covet and they forget the Sabbath and they misuse the name of Yahuwah. Doesn't make sense. The Bible says if you truly love Yahuwah, then you must obey the Ten Commandments. Because obeying the Ten Commandments is how we prove that we truly love Yahuwah. This is why in our next set of lessons, we're going to look one by one at all the Ten Commandments of Yahuwah. And this time, we're going to see how we are able to express love for Yahuwah within all the Ten Commandments. Because every command that Yahuwah has given in the Ten Commandments reveals his character and provides us a way to express love for Abba, for Yahuwah. This is why we're going to have an in-depth study of the Ten Commandments. How important are the Ten Commandments to our King Yahusha, which is why we're going to undergo that set of studies. Let's read the book of Matthew 5, verse 19. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You know, everything, every issue that we're going to deal with in our time has already been discussed by our King Yahushua. You know, during our time, there are people who profess Christianity. They profess faith in our King Yahushua, but they say, we don't know, we no longer need the Ten Commandments. Our King Yahushua already knew this was going to happen. This is why he gave us this passage. Yahushua speaking about the Ten Commandments. And what did he say? There are going to be those who will teach men that the Ten Commandments are no longer applicable, right? And indeed, we find many who are from the pulpit and preach the gospel, they say, we no longer need the Ten Commandments. Or they, they have a different version of it. They will say things like, well, the Ten Commandments are still applicable, except for the Sabbath, right? All ten, I mean, all nine of the ten still applicable, but the Sabbath no more. Wait a minute. Our King Yahushua says we have to keep all of it. All the Ten Commandments. Because those who teaches men to break the least of the commandments will be least in the kingdom of heaven. But those who teach and those who follow them, 
the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So what does this tell us about our King Yahushua? He wants us to teach and wants us to do the whole set. All ten commandments, including observing the Sabbath, honoring Yahuwah on that day. This is the ten commandments of our King Yahushua. And so for those who truly love, who truly love Yahuwah, how can we prove that? Let's read the book of 1 John, chapter 5 and the verses 3. Loving God means keeping his commandments. Which commandments are those? The Ten Commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. You see, for those who truly love Yahuwah, all Ten Commandments will not be burdensome. In fact, it will be a delight for them to obey the Ten Commandments because they realize every time I obey the Ten Commandments, every time, for example, I make Yahuwah priority in my life, every time I worship Him in spirit and truth, every time I praise His name, Yahuwah, and worship His name, Yahuwah, every time they observe Sabbath, declaring it as a set-apart day, they're able to express their love for Yahuwah. But it's not burdensome. It's their pleasure. It's their pleasure to obey the commands. But the question is, is it enough? simply to carry out the action for us to be able to truly love Yahuwah? Take note, action, action is important. However, Yahuwah also looks at what? Your heart. Yahuwah also looks at the heart. It's good that we perform the Ten Commandments, but why do we do it? Are we doing it because we want to show love for Yahuwah? Because there are those who obey the commandments of God, but they don't even think about Yahuwah. Yes, action is important, but motivation, the heart, is also important. Now, who's an example of one who not only obeyed the commands, but he obeyed the commands because of his love, because of his heart? Let's read the book of Acts 13, verse 22. But God removed Saul. We know he was the first king of Israel. And replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. And so here we have a good example of one who obeyed the commands. But not only did he carry out the commands, his motivation, his purpose in carrying out the commands reveals his character. What was his motivation? What was his purpose? The Bible says, God himself, who can see the hearts of men, God himself says, David is a man after my own heart. You see, what Yahuwah wants are not robots, right? I mean, a robot, AI, can be programmed to completely obey anything that you want it to obey. But it lacks what? It lacks heart. This is why Yahuwah God created human beings with a heart, with a soul, with a spirit. We were made in the image of Abba. And so when we are given the Ten Commandments, not only must we obey them, we must obey them non-mechanically, not like robots. We must obey them with our heart. When we obey, it is out of an expression of affection for Yahuwah. Yahuwah, I love you. I'm going to obey the commands because I love you. That was David. Does it mean David was perfect? What is your answer? Far from it. You see, David, he was a human being, like you and I, right? We're human beings. Because we're human beings, we're not perfect at all, are we? We make mistakes, we commit sin. Look at David. He created, he made or committed a grievous sin, did he not? When he committed adultery, and then he even conceived of a plan to get Bathsheba's husband to die in battle? David, he committed sin. Yet despite the fact he committed sin, what do we know about David? When he sinned against Yahuwah, what did David do? Let's read what it says in the book of Psalm 51, 1, 3 to 4. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, for I acknowledge my transgressions. And my sin is always before me against you. You 
only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. David was different from the other kings because when he discovers and becomes aware of his sins, he takes action. His heart is broken. When you read the book of Psalm, it was penned after he was repentant, after he was punished by Yahuwah. He lost his child, his heart was broken, and he was truly repentant. And so even though he was not perfect in obedience, his heart, his heart belonged to who? Yahuwah. Brethren, does our heart belong? To Yahuwah. How can we know if our heart belongs to Yahuwah? When we discover our sins against Yahuwah, it breaks our heart. It breaks it. Like David, when he became aware of his sins, not only did he ask forgiveness, notice what he said because of what he did. David said, for I, I acknowledge my transgressions. He did not make excuses. He acknowledged it. But not only that, he also says, my sin is always before me. He's always thinking about his sins. He cannot get it out of his mind. Why? Why was he always thinking about his sins? Why was his heart so broken? Verse 4, he says, against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. You see, for David, he was, his heart was broken. His heart was shattered. He felt remorse and repentance because of his sin. Not because he was afraid of the punishment he was to receive. Because there are some people, whenever they commit sin, they're repentant. But the reason why they're repenting is because they want to avoid the punishment. David was repentant. Not because of fear of punishment. He was repentant because he knew. At that point, Yahuwah was displeased with him. That Yahuwah, Yahuwah was not happy with him. He was afraid of losing fellowship with Yahuwah. That's why he was truly repentant. David can endure suffering. David can endure hardship. David can endure persecution. David can endure the, the death of his loved ones. But what he cannot stand, what he will not be able to endure, is if Yahuwah will be far away from him. You see, for David, what is most important to him is fellowship with Abba, Abba being close to him. Because the moment that is gone, he's lost everything. That's how valuable Yahuwah is. That's what it means for his heart to belong to Yahuwah. More than anything, what he wants is relationship. That relationship is what love is all about. It's what David embodied. It's what David practiced. It's also what we need to practice in our relationship with Yahuwah. You know how important fellowship and being in the presence of Yahuwah was to David? Let's read what it says in the book of Psalms 5, 8, 11. You, Yahuwah, are all I have, and you give me all I need. My future is in your hands. I am always aware of Yahuwah's presence. He is near. Nothing can shake me. You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence, your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. How important was the presence of Yahuwah Abba in the life of David? David says, your presence fills me with joy and brings me pleasure forever. Brethren, there are many things in life that can bring us joy, right? When we succeed in school, in our business, it gives us joy, pleasure. When we're able to eat good food, it gives us joy and pleasure. When we see our loved ones embracing us, our children, our parents in our company, when we enjoy life together with the people we love, it brings us joy. It brings us pleasure. For David, what gave him the most joy, what gave him the most pleasure 
was the presence of Yahuwah. Because every day he would seek the presence of Yahuwah. That's why he says, I'm always aware of Yahuwah's presence. You see, David, when he sinned against Yahuwah, what he was most concerned about was not the punishment. What he was most concerned about, maybe Yahuwah will leave me. I cannot stand that. For David, he says, you, Yahuwah, are all I have. If he will, if Yahuwah will take himself away from David, he's got nothing left. He may have a palace. He may have wealth. He may have family. He may have servants. But if Yahuwah leaves, he doesn't have anything. Because his heart belongs to Yahuwah. Brethren, have we given our heart to Yahuwah? Does he mean everything to us to the point even if we lose everything else? But if we have Yahuwah, we have all that we need. Do we love Yahuwah? Because if we truly love Yahuwah, we will look for him. We will seek him. We want to be with him and in his presence. How can we find Yahuwah when we seek him like David? Let's read the book of Jeremiah 29, 13 or 14. When you look for me, the one speaking here is Yahuwah. And everyone here, as we gather for worship, we came here, we connected together because we had one purpose. We want to find Yahuwah. In our worship, if we are able to sing hymns, if we're able to pray, if we're able to study the word of God, but we fail to find him, how can we say we truly worship? Brethren, the purpose of worship is to find Yahuwah. And he wants to be found. But what must be seen in us? Yahuwah is the one speaking. He says, when you look for me, you will find me. When you wholeheartedly seek me, I will let you find me, declares Yahuwah. Then you will call to me. You will come and pray to me. And I will hear you. Brethren, only Yahuwah decides who will be able to find him. If he does not decide, he will be found by us. We cannot find him. He gets to, to be the one to decide. Yahuwah can be evasive. There are many people who look for him but fail to find him. But Yahuwah is speaking to us now through the scriptures and he's telling us, if you will look for me, you will find me. Why? Because we're the people that belong to him. But what must be seen in us? Yahuwah says, when you wholeheartedly seek me. Then Yahuwah says, I will let you find me. Brethren, have we found Yahuwah? Have we been taken to his arms? It's the greatest feeling in the world. It's like heaven on earth. Even though we're not in heaven, when Yahuwah's presence is among us, when we feel his presence in our heart, in our life, like what David said, nothing can move me. Nothing can shake me. And when Yahuwah is close to us, he's ready to listen to us. Yahuwah says, you will come and pray to me and I will hear you. Brothers and sisters, what do you want to say to our father Yahuwah? What can we say to him before we stand as a congregation? What can we ask from our father Yahuwah? Now that he is close to us, he is near us. Let's read the final passage of our studies, the book of Psalm 27, 10, 7 to 8. Even if my father and mother abandon me, Yahuwah will hold me close. Hear me as I pray, O Yahuwah. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, Come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Yahuwah, I am coming. Brothers and sisters, now that we're together, Yahuwah's in our midst. What should we ask our loving Father? What should we request from him? Why not go to him and say to him, Yahuwah Abba, will you hold me close? David says in his experience, even if my father and mother abandon me, 
because whether we like it or not, time will come when we will no longer have the company of our parents and the people we love. But even if our father and mother abandon us, there's always someone who's always going to be there. And the more trouble we face, the more sufferings we endure, the closer we feel to him. Haven't you noticed that, brethren? In the midst of our greatest sorrow, brings us the opportunity for closeness to our Father. Why? Because when Yahuwah sees our broken heart, when we see our dream shattered, when we see we have fallen because of the troubles we face in our life, He will take us and He will hold us. Not only will He hold us, David says, He will hold us close. The more sorrow we face, the closer we get to Yahuwah. This is the experience of David. This is also our experience. And so when we approach Yahuwah with our heart, expressing faith and love for him, what will we hear if we take the time to listen to the voice of Abba? Our heart will listen and we will hear Yahuwah speaking to our heart. And he will say, come and talk with me, brethren. Yahuwah created us because he wants that personal relationship with us. Why don't you talk to him? Yahuwah says, come and talk with me, with me. If we have an audience with Yahuwah, that's the greatest gift that we can ever aspire for. To talk with Yahuwah. Like David, we should respond, Yahuwah, I am coming because Yahuwah is all that we need. Go to him. Express your love to him. Express your sorrows to him. Say to him, no matter what, Father, no matter what, you are, I will never leave you because my heart I have already given to you. Brethren, can we give our heart to Yahuwah today? That's what it means to truly love Father. Give our heart, our soul, to the Father who loves us more than we can even imagine. And he will hold us close no matter what we face in our life. Let us stand and we shall pray together. Everlasting Father, almighty and gracious Abba. Whenever we call on your name, Yahuwah, we can feel from heaven. You are pouring out your spirit because you are compassionate. And you have love that endures, love that never fails. It is what you want from us. We know what you desire. You created us for that purpose, to have a true and loving relationship with you. When we think about our life, who better than you can possibly make us filled with joy? Yes, there are many things in this life, your gifts, your blessing, that put a smile on our faces. But nothing can compare, loving Abba, when we feel your presence. Oh, Abba, we need you. Do not be far from us. We know that day draws closer when you will send your son. And when that day comes, as we move closer and closer, we can feel the trials of life testing our faith. We need you, Abba. May you pour your spirit upon us. We listen to your voice when you say to our hearts to talk to you. Sometimes we don't know what to say. But you can read our tears, the groans of our heart. Would that be enough, loving Abba? Sometimes we cannot mouth the words. You know, you know what we go through in life. We approach you now, wherever we may be at this hour. When your people go through danger, when your people become sick, when your people endure hardship and poverty, 
loving Abba, we can endure all that. But what we cannot stand is if you will no longer be in our midst. Father, Abba, Allah, be with us now. Strengthen our faith once again. Our King Yahusha. Yahusha, our Lord, our Master and Redeemer, we humbly approach you now. Remember everyone here. Without you, we are nothing. You made us special. The world looks down upon us. We are but a statistic, a name on a database. But you, when you look at us, you see servants who belong to you, sheep. You are our shepherd. You love us and give our life worth. And so we have something to fight for. The faith that was given through you. Help us to fight a good fight of faith. And to prevail and overcome as you strengthen us so. Father, bless everyone. Bless those who are without jobs. Bless those who are sick. Heal your people. Bless those who are losing hope. May we see you. Bless those who are weak and physically. May you be our strength. Father, we look up to you. Shower upon us your benediction. We ask and beg everything loving Abba. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. And tender mercies overshadow us. The memory and peace of Yahushua HaMashiach strengthen us. And the constant companionship of the Ruach Kadash be with all of us now and forever. Amen. My uh, brothers and sisters, it's a few announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, let us be reminded that our next uh, children's worship service, well, not children's worship service, children's ministry classes will not be for today, but next week. Next week, we will give you the, the new Zoom ID for our upcoming classes. Also, let's be reminded concerning our uh, Bible studies. Let us continually support and share our Bible studies with as many people as possible. If you have any questions, please submit them to ministry at assemblyofyahusha.org. Let us continue to, let's remember uh, that we have a new Zoom ID, and this is for our worship services, BQA, BHP, 830-6863-4210. Maybe you can write this down on your calendar. That way you do not forget. And let us also prepare for our upcoming autumn festivals. We are rehearsing for the event that will take place on the Feast of Trumpets, the Atonement, Feast of Tabernacles. Remember our King Yahushua in the first four feasts, right? Which was the Passover, the Unleavened Bread, a Feast of First Fruits, Pentecost. The first four feasts, Yahushua did something significant. And so this tells us Yahushua in the future will do something significant on the Feast of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles. So we're rehearsing for that. We are preparing for that as an expression of our faith in our Father Yahuwah and Yahusha. And so let us observe the autumn festivals uh, out of faith. And these are the dates for our upcoming uh, festivals. And for Feast of Tabernacles, we're going to have on the last day, we're going to have a gathering, an in-person gathering. We will disclose to you uh, where we're going to have this in-person gathering at um, on a person-to-person -person basis and not publicly like this, okay? Um, and lastly, we have our new website. Uh, there have been questions concerning online giving. So if you click to online, the online giving uh, section, uh, it will take you to our online giving uh, page or we can give to Zelle or PayPal but please take note that the email that we're using is no longer info at assemblyofyahusha.org but it is offerings at assemblyofyahusha.org. That is all and may Yahuwah Abba and Yahusha HaMashiach bless you.